to the thrilling adventures of the shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. In just a minute, today's exciting adventure will begin. The shadow who aids the forces of law and order is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago, the Orient Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret. The hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, The Fine Art of Murder. <laughs> I never meant to harm or frighten anyone. I never meant to use these two hands of mine to kill. They were meant to paint pictures, beautiful pictures. My studio and home is a house along the southern shore in the lovely Sea Island country. I live alone there the year round and paint. One day, I walked down to the forest. I planned to do a seascape. I found myself alone, except for a young girl I saw kneeling on the end of the dock. She seemed to be trying to fish something out of the water. And then I, I saw her crumble and fall into the sea. I ran quickly to the edge of the dock. She was struggling in the water below me. I, I could have saved her, but something stopped me. It was the sight of her face sinking for the last time beneath the blue-green water. It was a thing of beauty now. Her dead face sinking slowly. Slowly to the bottom of the sea. I killed her, I guess. I could have saved her so easily. In my studio that night, I tried to recapture the beauty of that face under the sea. I, I couldn't remember it. The accident had happened too quickly. And then, then I realized I could never rest until I found the perfect model. And I would paint her lovely dead face looking up at me from under the sea. This is almost the nicest idea you ever had, darling. Coming down south here for a few days' rest before the holidays. Well, it was pretty much of an inspiration, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Think what Commissioner Weston would say, Margot, if he saw us lolling around here on the beach. <laughs> or Shrevey. Especially Shrevey. <laughs> Gee, what a couple of lucky dogs they are, languishing in the sunny southern beach while I'm driving my hack through the sleet and the slush I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of the sunny southern beach, this one's getting a little chilly, darling. I think we'd better head back to the hotel. Yes, it is a little bleak now the sun started to go down. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll put the rest of the food back in the basket if you'll put out the fire. Right. Hope I don't have as much trouble putting this fire out as I did getting it lit. Never was much of a boy scout. Lamont. Hmm? Lamont, listen. What is it, darling? Listen, that sound, like someone crying. It's coming closer. There, there she is. There's a young girl, Lamont. She's just very cold. I'm not mistaken. She's badly hurt. Lamont, she's falling. She's faint. She's faint. There's a doctor who has a cot he set down the beach, darling. Remember the hotel clerk told us? That's right. You pick up our things, Margaret. I'll carry her to the car. This girl needs medical attention fast. A few days after I watched the first girl drown, I was on the beach painting at sundown when I saw her walking along the sand toward me. Stopped to look at my painting. And as I looked at her, I realized this was a face I might use to paint my picture of death under the sea. The other girl had died too quickly. Perhaps this one. Go ahead. Look at the painting. I don't mind. Thank you. 
It's very strange. Hmm? Just what? Aren't you going to put anything else in the picture? Yes. Yes, I am. Why are you looking at me like that? Did I say anything wrong? No, no. No, I just had an idea. I think your face would look well in this. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? What are these long strands of seaweed? Let me put them around your throat like this. Stop it, oh, Don't, don't struggle. Don't stop me. Seaweed is hosting me. Let me go. Oh, don't, don't struggle like that. Your face must show peace and calm. Let me go. Oh, into the water. It's shallow here, but deep enough for you to drown. No, I... no get... Let me up. Down, I... under the water. Get down. Under the water. Oh. oh. <laughs> For some strange reason, I let her go. I stood there in the shallow water and saw her running half crazy down the beach. How is she now, Dr. James? I can't tell yet, Mr. Cranston, but you're quite right. Somebody or something has tried to drown her. The attack has frightened her almost out of her mind. Doctor, did you notice that she was touching a blade or something in her hand? Yes, yes, I have it here. A palette knife that I artists use. And, uh, I noticed something else. The dress was smeared with sort of a blue-green paint. Have you any idea who she is, Dr. James? I haven't been able to get her to talk, but I know that she's Cara Mason. She and her aunt have taken a cottage down the beach. Uh, her aunt should be notified. Well, Doctor, will it be all right if Miss Lane and I break the news to Kara's aunt? Well, I'd be most grateful, Mr. Cranston. Their cottage is number 20, just a short walk down the shore road. Oh, thank goodness we're here, darling. I almost ruined my shoes walking across that wet sand. Oh, good evening. I'm Lamont Cranston. This is Miss Lane. Have you a niece named Kara Mason? Yes. I'm Miss Margaret Mason, her aunt and guardian. What do you want? I'm afraid, Miss Mason, we have some rather shocking news. Something's happened to Kara. Well, I can't watch her every minute. I, I've been in my bed with a splitting headache since noon. She's at Dr. James' place in a coma. Someone apparently tried to strangle or drown your niece tonight. Oh, uh... They did? Tell me, did you ever see this before, Miss Mason? It's a palette knife, the kind artists use. Yes. I've seen it before. It's his. He did it. He tried to kill her. Who, Miss Mason? Boyd Farnsworth, a no good young artist. He's been madly infatuated with Kara ever since we moved here. I warned her against him. I forbade her to ever see him again. But I never dreamed he'd do a thing like this. That... Oh, if you'll excuse me, Miss Lane, Mr. Cranston, I'd better say good night. Uh-oh. Well, that's a quick brush off. Yes, wasn't it? She certainly didn't seem very concerned about a niece. No, she didn't. Come on, darling. What are you conjuring up in that masked mind of yours? I was just wondering, Margot, how Miss Mason could positively identify an artist's pallet knife when they all look alike. Oh. Why, she told us she hadn't been out of the house. And her footprints in the wet sand were still on the front porch. Maybe she had some part in this lover's quarrel between Carol and... What was his name? Farnsworth, the young artist. Maybe there never was a lover's quarrel. Let's make it simple, darling. How do you mean? Let's go see Farnsworth and ask him. I got back to my studio as soon as I could after I let the girl go. I wanted to get started painting before the inspiration left me. For hours, I desperately tried to recapture the look of that face under the water. And then I realized why I'd let her go. She wasn't the perfect model. I still hadn't found a face beautiful enough to be worthy of my portrait of death under the sea. Mr. Farnsworth doesn't seem to be at home, darling. The well, door's partly open. There's a light on the inside. Come on in, Margot. Right. I'd like to have a look at this studio. He's certainly been busy. Walls are covered with his paintings. They're darn good, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Strong, vivid colors. Certainly doesn't look like... Listen, Lamont, what's that? Sounds like water overflowing a tub. Look, darling. There's water running out under the door. 
It's not just water, Margot. There's blood in it. Stand back away from the door. What's in there, Don? Man's body in the tub with both wrists slashed. Call Dr. James at once, Margot. <laughs> You do a fine job, Mr. Cranston. You and Miss Lane probably saved this young man's life, applying those tourniquets until I got here. Tara's aunt told us he'd been running after her niece. I wonder... Do you think he was the one who tried to kill Carla? Perhaps. And then in a fit of remorse, tried to take his own life. These pictures on the wall. Wouldn't you say they were created by a young, healthy mind? All except this one. Yes. The strange watery greens and blues. Wasn't it a greenish-blue paint you found on Tara's dress, Dr. James? Yes, but this isn't a Farnsworth painting. No. The name on it is Craig Elliott. Do you know him, Dr. James? Uh, no, I don't, Mr. Cranston. He's one of the few artists who keep pretty much to himself. Where does he live? It's the last cottage down the shore road. Come on, darling. Why are you staring so strangely at that painting? I don't know, Lamont. There's something sort of fascinating about it. So that's what brought them to my place. A painting that I left at Farnsworth. That's what set this Lamont Cranston on my trail. I heard them talking about it as they came up the steps of my front porch. I dropped off to sleep on my couch, exhausted from trying to paint that girl's face in my underwater scene. As they stopped at the front door, I dropped down behind the sofa. I couldn't let them see me. The scratches on my face with the girl that struck me would be sure giveaway. I, uh, I heard them ring the doorbell. I crawled out of that line of vision on the studio floor and dashed up the stairway of the second floor balcony. As I heard the screen door open and looking down, saw them... I mean, what a huge studio, Lamont. Look up at that big skylight in the center of the room. I stepped back quickly so they couldn't see me on the balcony in the dark. But I did see the girl's face. And she looked up just It was more beautiful than all of them. I think. That's the perfect model I've been hoping for. Look at these pictures, Margo. Oh, dear. They're almost like dead things hanging there on the wall. Almost all of them have that same blue-green paint Dr. James found on Tara's dress. He had seen the girl tonight. My heart was pounding in terror. Margo, look at the painting on the easel here. Oh, it's just water. What an odd thing to see. Perhaps it's not silly. The girl looked up again. And as I stepped back, I bumped against the heavy step on the top of the balustrade. And then the thought came to me. It might have fallen on you. Darling, that half grown girl. I, I know it sounds crazy. Do you suppose somehow her fortress was meant for this painting here? She's getting my secret. She's coming too close to the truth. I picked up the heavy step and waited. Waited for his next move. Wonder where he is. So do I. You gotta have a look around. I moved to the edge of the balcony slowly. The statue raised high above my head. Besides, she turned to speak to the girl. Margo! With my chance, my chance to get rid of this man and have a girl in my mind at the same time. She moved away first. Something just to And then? She moved back and came to me. Now. Now he was directly under me and with all my strength I hurled the statue down and... We'll return to the shadow in just a minute. And now, back to the shadow. Lamont Cranston and Margot Lane searching for an insane killer who has tried to drown a young girl, Tara Mason have come upon the seaside studio of the artist Craig Elliott the artist, watching unseen from a balcony above has dropped a heavy statue upon the unsuspecting Cranston 
down in the head. I'll be all right, Margot. The screen may be turned aside just in time. Oh, Lamont, you're bleeding. Huh? My head is bleeding. Put your arm around my shoulder. I've got to get you out of here and back to Dr. James. <laughs> When I saw them go out of my cottage, I ran downstairs. At a safe distance, I followed them. I mustn't let Margaret Lane out of my sight now until somehow I could get her back. Her perfect face must go in my picture. I followed them to the cottage occupied by Dr. James and saw them go inside. I hid and waited. Waited for my chance to get her out. Does your head feel better now, Miss Cranston? I'm all right. Dr. James was only a scratch. A scratch? <laughs> Now, why do you think I brought you here? You nearly passed out. Well, how did it happen? Was it an accident? I can't be sure. But I think we may be pretty close to finding the man who attacked Kara Mason. Perhaps the answer to why Farnsworth tried to commit suicide. Dr. James, may I see Kara for a moment right now? Well, she's still not quite herself, Mr. Cranston. In her present state of shock, I don't think you'll get much sense out of her. Sudden reaction might bring her out of this coma, mightn't it, Doctor? Mm, what sort of a reaction? Bringing back to her the name of the man I think almost killed her? Mm. It might work. Then come on. She's in here. Karen. Can you hear me? Karen, listen. Listen to this name. Craig Elliot. Craig? Craig Elliot. Craig Elliot? Do you know that name? You can hear me, Kara. You do know someone is talking to you. You're afraid of something or somebody, Kara. Who is it? What is it? I'm afraid. I'm afraid of her. Afraid of her? She be. Who, Kara? Your aunt? Yes. Yes, I. Mr. please. No more tonight. Very well. Thank you, Doctor. I think I found out enough. From where I was hiding, I saw them come out of the doctor's cottage, get into their car, and drive away. I saw Dr. James come in the driveway. I jumped into it. She started following them again. But I don't understand, Lamont. Didn't Kara recognize the name Craig Elliott? Apparently, she'd never heard it before in her life. That's strange. Why was I going to the aunt's house again? Kara's terrified of that woman. She says her aunt beat her. That poor, frail little thing. But why? I don't know yet, Margot, but we'll soon find out, I hope. Isn't that the cottage down this shore, Rose? Yes, you wait here. I wanted to hear the car stopping. I want to surprise Miss Margaret Mason when the shadow pays the call. <laughs> Dr. James' car some distance behind Cranston. As I saw him get out, yes, I saw him disappear down a lonely beach. I waited a moment and then walked up to the Cranston car. Why, Lamont, is that you back so soon? No, this isn't Lamont, Miss Lane. Who are you? How do you know my name? I know your name because I was listening and watching when you came to my studio tonight. You were in that studio? Yes. You dropped that statue? Yes, I dropped that statue, and I'm sorry I missed. But it doesn't make any difference now because I'll still be able to do what I have to do, even though Cranston is alive. Get your hands off me. No, I... I wouldn't stop him saying. I'm a very strong man, and it'll be useless to scream. Even your friend Cranston won't be able to hear you from here. Where are you taking me? We are going to the rocky cliff at the end of the road, Miss Lane. There's a cave I found with a little pool. There's the moonlight stage in. I shall paint you. All right. I'll come with you. Hmm? I'd like you to paint my portrait, Mr. Elliot. I knew you'd be sensible. The other girl was afraid. You saw what happened to her. Come on. Very well. Enough. Not along the shore. You're a clever one, aren't you? You know Cranston will follow our footprints in the wet sand. Get back up the road. You've forgotten something, haven't you, Mr. Elliot? What? What are you doing? Picking up strands of seaweed I've seen in your other pictures. You need seaweed for the portrait, don't you? (laughs) 
Hello. Hello. Oh, this is Miss Margaret Mason, operator. Will you try again to get me a taxi? I've got to get out of here tonight. Hang up that receiver, Miss Margaret Mason. You're not going anywhere. What's that, operator? What did you say? Hang up that telephone receiver, Miss Mason. Oh, I did hear a voice. My nerves are playing tricks. This is no trick, Miss Mason. This is the shadow. <laughs> shadow? I, I can't see anyone. Shadow is invisible, Miss Mason. He sees deep into your mind and heart. I've done nothing wrong. You tried to kill your niece, Carl. No. You struck her and beat her. I had to at times. She wouldn't do what I told her to do. What was it you were so anxious to have her do, Miss Mason? Well, what was it? I wanted her to break off with that young artist, Farnsworth. They were talking of getting married, and I'm sure he just wanted to marry her for her money, and then I... Her money? So that's it, Miss Mason. You didn't want her to get married so that you as her guardian would have control of her money. Yes. Yes, that's it. You wanted to get rid of Farnsworth, so you tried to make people believe that it was he who attacked your niece. Oh, that's not true. You tried to incriminate him when Cranston and the lame girl questioned you today, didn't you? How did you know that? And something else, Miss Mason. You did go out on the beach. Your wet footprints were still on the steps. Yes, I did. And you know who attacked your niece. Yes, but I... You saw, yet you didn't try to stop him. Who was it, Miss Mason? Who was it? I don't know. But it wasn't Farnsworth. It was an older man. A large man, powerful. I never saw him before in my life. Shadow will find out who this madman is, Miss Mason. And if you've lied again, you too will pay for your wickedness. Here is the cave, Miss Lane. How do you like it? It's beautiful. You see the pool of water caught and held by the rock? I'll set up my easel. The paint that you did, not Don't start yet. Let me rest. That long walk. Oh, we're going to start now. No, please, let me rest. I said we're going to start now. Let me go. You, you promised not to touch me if I came don't, along. Don't fight me. Stop struggling. That's what the others did. Let me go. Yes. Yes. Into the pool. That's where we start with your beautiful face under the water. Let me go. I can't breathe. Mm, you must drown. You must lie quietly and peacefully under the water with the seaweed entangled in your lovely hair. Where is the seaweed you picked up on the shore? Here is a what? strand of seaweed. What? What's that voice? Craig Elliott, you're here. Will this do, Craig Elliott? A strand of seaweed dropped from thin air into my pool. Symbol of your madness. Madness? I'm not mad. I hear a voice talking to me. Yes, but I'm not mad. You are mad, Elliot. Your insane passion for painting death has come to an end. No, d don't say that. I've got to paint. I've got to paint a portrait of a beautiful girl's face under the sea. You'll never paint again, Elliot. Yes. Yes, I will. I'll go where I can paint. Stay where you are. I know every jagged rock here. No one can follow me. Come down off those rocks. No. I'll paint again. Look out, you fool. You're slipping. <laughs> You all right now, aren't you, Margo? Yes, Mama. But it has been a horrible experience. You're a brave girl, darling, to play along with Elliot the way you did. Very clever to think of dropping those pieces of seaweed along the road to the cave. I suppose Elliot deserved it, but what a horrible way to die. Smashed to death in those rocks. He didn't die on the rocks, Margo. He evidently jumped clear of them. The fall to the sand, killed him? No, it merely knocked him unconscious. Then apparently he lay there right at the water's edge. As the tide came in... He died as justice would have it. He drowned? Yes, Margot. By the time I reached him, he had drowned. In only an inch or two of water. This story is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Again next week, the shadow will demonstrate that the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs>
Good. Next week, same time, same station, brings you another strange and thrilling adventure in the shadow's daring battle against the forces of evil. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.